Today's topic is very fun. We're talking about breakups. Yay! Great. How to get over a breakup. It's okay, so it's positive. It's not just wallowing in the mire of a breakup. I had a commenter who recently asked me on my How to Get Over Crushes video, Frank, how do you get over a bad breakup? Because I'm going through one now and it's not, it's not going so great. How do I how do I pull myself out of this? Good question. I've got a lot of advice to give you. So strap in, lace up your Jordans, and let's get on with this thing. First of all, you're not really going to want to listen to a lot of advice, even though you asked for it. But what I have found is when I'm in the midst of a breakup, and I'm looking at all the YouTube videos about breakups and stuff, there is always something very painful about it. And I don't want to listen to what they have to say, because it's, it's almost like they can't relate to the pain that I'm going through, or they just don't understand the uniqueness of the situation and how special my relationship was. But that's just a, that's just our way of looking at it. Once, well actually, once you're past the breakup and you look at that same advice, you'll be like, oh, I agree totally with what they're saying. It was very smart advice. And it was just my perspective at the time, the fact that I was in so much grief, that it made it difficult to listen to reason. Because when you're in an extreme state of sadness and when you're grieving the loss of something significant like a relationship, it's difficult to think clearly and to not be just attached to what you once had. And that's really the first thing to recognize is that you're grieving and that you should grieve. And it's a difficult thing. In our society, we don't really, uh, it's weird, like we go through breakups and we know that they're really tough and that you're grieving, but on the other hand, it's not like you get uh, bereavement leave from your job, you know? If someone dies, they'll give you maybe a day or two off of work, but if you go through a breakup, which can be extremely difficult and you can grieve, you know, let's be honest, you can grieve just as much after a breakup as if someone died. I know that maybe that sounds extreme, but it can happen. But no one else cares. They're like, just get on with it. Get on with your life. It's just a relationship. Because that's the thing. When you are, when you are in the midst of it, you know how painful it is. But when you're outside of it, you can see the objective reality that uh, it's just a relationship. You can find someone else. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Because other people looking at the situation didn't have the connection that you had with your ex-partner. You see, that's what really makes it difficult is that connection. It's not the person in and of themselves. Like, have you ever, have you ever seen someone grieve someone else's breakup? I mean, you'll, you'll see people who are like, oh, that's sad, I feel bad for you, but it's like, the, the connection doesn't matter to them. It only really matters to you. That doesn't make it less real, but that's why people can't really relate to it. That's why we don't, give people that much uh, time to grieve because it's difficult to to really see objectively what the issue is. When someone dies, we're like, yeah, someone died. When you break up, it's like, ah, get over it. It's kind of sad. <laughs> but that's just the world we live in. Take the time to grieve, though. Yeah, you got to go to work, etc. Other people may not care. Don't hold it against them. But carve time out to really grieve the the loss and the the whole purpose of grief as i see it is you had something in your life you had your you had a view of reality you had your life constructed in such a way in your mind and then something happens where suddenly that gets blown apart and reality isn't the same anymore cuz we don't see reality as reality you know, if we did, we probably would see things objectively the way that other people see it when a breakup happens. They'll be like, okay, yeah, that's sad, but there are other people out there, whatever. But we don't see things subject uh, objectively. We see things subjectively where we define our lives based on our relative position 
of others and other things in the world. So we define ourselves in a way with our relationship. Reality is defined in a way by our relationships and by the things that we have in our lives. So that thing is gone, that person is gone, that relationship is gone. Boom! A leg has been knocked out of your reality and that's extremely painful and grief is the process of getting over that, accepting it and rebuilding reality without that thing. So it's important to grieve. Don't feel like I can't, I can't feel that stuff. You've got to go all the way into the emotions, right? Sometimes we come up on the edge of an emotion and we know it's bad and we're like, if I go all the way into this, it's going to be worse. Uh, and this is not going to be a pleasant thing. But that's what you got to do. Go all the way into it and just, because once you go through it, then you can move past it. If you are like skirting the edge of it and then you kind of suppress it before you go through it, before you fully grieve it, it's going to be difficult to put back together things afterward. It can be good. In the moment, it can seem harsh, but it can be good to like say aloud the new reality. Say, this relationship is done. This person is not in my life anymore. They are gone. This relationship does not exist. It's rough. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that this is an easy thing. And you're probably going to be bawling your eyes out as you do that. But I think that's the best way to do it. You're just like telling yourself, this is reality. Now cry. Get it over with. Get it out of there. And it might not be like something that happens in one day, but you, I feel like you're going to be really, you're going to feel a lot better once you let yourself go all the way into the grief. And grief takes some time, but after a while you will have rebuilt your reality without that relationship and you will be okay with it. It's hard to believe. Once, once a breakup happens, it's hard to believe you'll ever be okay ever again. It feels like nothing it feels like nothing's ever going to be good. The world is a terrible, hollow, gray place. And no one else cares or understands what you're going through. And in a way, that's true. No one else does really care the way you care. No one else really understands what you're going through. And in some ways, maybe that can be comforting because you realize this is just a subjective thing. This is, the thing wasn't, the relationship wasn't objectively the greatest thing ever. It was just the attachment that I had to it. What makes other people special to us is not necessarily an inherent specialness of them. What it is, is they have a unique combination of traits that we get, we become fond of. You know, when we meet someone who had, who, I don't know, like, I'm just going to pull some random traits out of my pocket here. You know, oh, they like all the same music that I like, and all the same food, and they've got a great sense of humor, and it's like, these are all traits that I've never seen in another person, and so that was so special, I'm, nev I'm never going to find that again. And it was such a tragedy that I lost this person, because how am I ever going to find someone with all those traits? But you see, it's just, it's just that unique combination of traits that you find special. And yeah, maybe you won't find someone else with that specific combination, but you'll probably be able to find someone else who has another unique combination of traits that you will find just as special. And you probably don't even know what those traits would be until you see them and you're like, oh, <clears throat> I got choked up. Oh, that's cool. That someone, you know, maybe they don't like the same music that I do, but they have these other interests that I like. They do these other things that I find attractive in this unique combination that makes this person special. Because think about it, what the things that made that person that you broke up with special, were you looking for that when you found this person? Were you looking, did you have a profile written out that exactly fit your ex-partner? I doubt it. So there's other stuff out there that you don't know about, these other combinations of traits that a person could be that will surprise you and you're like, man, this is great. This new person I met is exciting because of their unique personality. So that's a good way to look at it that this, this person I'm letting go of 
I'm, don't be afraid. I think that's what it is. There's a fear that letting go of this person, I've lost this unique thing that they had, I'm never going to get that back. Who knows, maybe you will get that back in another person, but you'll probably find something else that's just as good, if not better. So don't get too attached to that one person and their, their unique personality, what they had going on. Because no one is, it's difficult to admit, and it really is painful to say this, but, or when you're in the midst of a breakup to tell yourself this, that person wasn't that special. That relationship wasn't that special. That's what makes it super painful is when you feel like it was really special. This is, this is the advice you're really not going to want to hear, by the way. By the way. Uh, what made it special was your connection to the person, not the person in and of themselves. It, it was the relationship. And what is the relationship? It takes you. You're half of it. It's not just them. So what's to say you couldn't create that special, unique thing with someone else? So it's not, what I mean is it's not that special. Sure, it was special. But it's not like irreplaceably special, is what I'm trying to get at. And as I said, that's one of the biggest problems is we feel afraid. We feel like hopeless that we're never going to find anything like that ever again. That we've lost something irreplaceable. It is replaceable. This is the harsh truth. Get this through your mind. That, that break, that relationship is replaceable. As harsh as that seems. As much as you see the smiling face of your ex in your mind and you're like, how could I ever replace them? You can. Uh, you can do it. It's not out of, uh, it's not really that difficult actually. You might be embarrassed in a few years when you find someone else and you're like, wow, why did I think that other person was irreplaceable? We're all kind of, all of us are sort of replaceable in a way, because really, it, the relationship is the thing, not the person. Sure, pe people are great. You know, other people, I'm not here to down, I'm not here to cut down other people or to say that other people aren't great, but what makes it special is the relationship, which is in many ways just the shared experiences you have. And you can make shared experiences with anybody. You can be compatible with lots of people, not just one person. All of this stuff I'm saying is basically to kind of ease that feeling of the loss being a huge loss. It's not like you lost your leg. Your leg is more or less irreplaceable. Yeah, you can get a prosthetic, but uh, it's not your leg. Your boyfriend or your girlfriend, they're replaceable. Way more replaceable than, you know, if you lost your leg, if you lost your eyesight, those things yeah, be be more wary of losing those things, but relationships can be built up with new people. Now, when it comes to more practical stuff, let me let me check my notes over here. More practical things to do. Now that I've kind of relieved that first part of it, that you're so attached to the person, you can kind of let go of that attachment a bit. I'm not saying that you're, it's wrong to be attached, but the, these are things to meditate on to, to let go of the attachment. But then there are practical things to be done. First of all, uh, write. Write everything down that you're thinking and everything that you're feeling. Just try to express everything that's going on. Write pages and pages in your journal. Write the stuff that's really painful. Write all your fears. Write down the, the stuff that you don't even want to say. Because when the thoughts are in your mind, they're like a storm. They're like a tornado. And it's difficult to bottle. You know, it's difficult to make sense of it. When you are writing down everything that's going on in your mind, you are forcing a bottleneck of everything down into your pen. It's even, and that's why I think writing is even better than talking. Talking it out is good. I'll get to that next. But writing is even more important because how many words per minute can you write and how many words per minute can you think? So there, you're creating, you're forcing your thoughts to be slowed down and expressed in a somewhat more deliberate way. And once you start to do that, your brain can work it out. Your brain can figure out all the stuff that's up there without you even realizing it. 
like you might feel like you're just writing stream of consciousness BS that doesn't make any sense and is making you feel worse but after you've done it for a few days all of a sudden your brain will be like oh I get it I I understand what's going on now it doesn't seem such such a big deal anymore that's the other thing is when you see stuff written down on the page they're just words you're like oh yeah it's sad but it's not overwhelming anymore when they're in your mind and your mind is all these words and you know images your mind is playing back the movies of your past and it's all you know all the cinematic stuff about your your ex that is difficult to handle but when it's written down on a page in your own handwriting it's way easier to deal with so that's why I say write. write write as much as you can until it starts to feel better I've done this several times when I've dealt with breakups and that always leads to peace a lot faster than if I hadn't done that. And I also mentioned talking it out with people. Talking it out is good because then you have other people that are kind of giving you some feedback of with what you're saying, you know, and just to know that someone else is hearing you can make you feel better. And it can also force you to express yourself, articulate yourself in a more clear way because you're trying to make someone else understand. And sometimes when you express things to other people, it just it feels like a great weight lifted off of you to finally be able to say, oh yeah, I feel really bad. Oh, I feel hopeless. I feel afraid. To just get that out there to someone else feels much better. Now, the thing you've got to do though is limit yourself. Make that structured. With the writing, do, just do as much as you can. With talking to other people, you don't want to go too far and start to use them as a crutch. You know, you need to keep it structured and be like, I'll talk to you for an hour and we'll see how I feel in a few days and maybe talk again. But don't just like constantly be dumping on other people. I'm not saying like, oh, it's... <laughs> I'm not suggesting you're being a burden right now. Cut it out. But you don't want to get to a point where it's just one way word vomit without the time for you to process it, you know? Without the time to reflect on everything that you talked about. And there is something to that of just taking responsibility for your own emotions and not making other people responsible for them. Because when you're, when you're unrestricted and you're just like constantly talking about everything on your mind having to do with this breakup, it can veer into the territory of I need you to take responsibility for all this stuff and to figure it out for me and to make me feel better but ultimately it's your responsibility so you that's why it's good to to talk it out with people but then to take the time to own it for yourself to really take responsibility for what you're feeling and take responsibility for feeling better other people aren't going to make you feel better you have to do it for yourself. I can't make you feel better talking to you. I can maybe give you a little relief and give you a little bit of a direction. Other people can do that for you too, which is why it's good to talk it out. But they can't they ultimately can't solve it for you. That's going to come from within. You I don't even know that you can do it for yourself consciously. It's kind of like subconsciously it'll work itself out, but you need to take the time to process on your own. Furthermore, talking to your friends and your family is good. If you have access to a psychologist or a counselor, a professional, go that route if you can. Because it's very helpful to have someone who knows the right questions to ask to lead you to, uh, to heal yourself faster. I highly recommend that in addition to talking to friends and family. Uh, because when you have a broken arm you go to the doctor why not when you have a broken heart you know go to someone who specializes in this kind of healing you know, it's just it really just comes down to human psychology you know going through a breakup grieving having a broken heart these are these are not new things these are not it's not magical it has it's human psychology so seeing a psychologist makes a lot of sense i highly recommend it Beyond talking it out, distract yourself. 
tell yourself, I'm not going to think about this during certain times. I'm going to put this off until later today to think about it. And do some stuff that will distract you. Have some fun. Just try to get out there. Even if it's just walking around the block, do something so that you're not just sitting in your room looking at the wall and thinking, I, I am suffering so much. You know, sometimes uh, if we're left to our own devices for too long, we will like destroy ourselves from the inside. So you need to get out into the real world. Do some, do some physical activity. Exercise a bit. Uh, go hiking. Go hang out with your friends. Go bowling. I'm just throwing out some random stuff. Just do stuff that where you're forced to get into your body a bit more and you're not just, you don't have too much time to think. Because it's, it's good to get into your body. When you go into a, any kind of grief thing, you go too much into your mind. Get out of your mind. Get into your body. And another thing is don't self-medicate too much with alcohol and all the other fun stuff that you can put into your body to change your uh, psychological state. I, you know, like, let's get real. If people are sad, they're gonna drink a bit to take the edge off, but you don't want that to become a crutch. So you wanna really, you need to be tough with yourself and be like, I need to get, you'll get through it much faster on your own if you're not using other stuff, but I understand if the first day or two you need to, you know, have a few cold ones, but beyond that, don't let it develop into a crutch that you need to get through it and that you can't stop doing after the breakup. You know what I'm saying? So don't self-medicate. Even if it's just like eating a pint of Ben and Jerry's, well, don't maybe do that once. Don't do it every day. Let's not destroy ourselves in the process of healing. This is a, this is a very painful time, but it's also very temporary. You'll get over it. Uh, and you'll, you don't need to make things worse in the long term uh, in terms of your health to get over it. Sure, one night, uh, go crazy. Sure, uh, it could even be like playing video games all day. Sure, okay, you can waste a day doing something mindless like that. But don't make it like, I have to have this to get through the day. I need this distraction in order to not feel things. Uh, not smart. Feel the things. If you need the distraction, do physical activities that get you more in your body. Don't do stuff that will in the long term harm you or become a bad habit. Now that should get you through the hardest part of it. And eventually it's, it's not going to be soon, but after, I don't know, a month, maybe two months, try to get out there and see and show yourself that there are more fish in the sea because it's difficult to believe. Even once you're kind of past the grief and you're not crying all the time, it still, it still might feel difficult to really believe that you could find something else out there that is special, you know, that you could have another relationship. So just kind of force yourself to test the water, dip your toe into it, which could be as simple as just flirting a little bit, just smiling and saying hi to someone you find attractive. That's it. Don't push it too much. If you want to, if you feel like you can, maybe try going on a date. It's a low investment thing. You're just having coffee with someone, getting to know them. And the point isn't so much to jump right into a relationship again. I would say don't do that. It's probably better to stay single for a while after a breakup, but just to, to do those initial low investment, low commitment things to show to sh prove to yourself that, oh, there are more uh, possibilities out there. My ex wasn't it. There, there are other people. That's a really good thing, and that can, that can really get your brain going fast into healing, where it's like, why, did I, why was I so attached to that relationship? Because clearly there's other stuff out there for me. So that's a good thing to do after a month, two, three maybe, I don't, like I, it's up to you. I don't know what the relationship specifics were for you, but after a while, after you've gotten over the grief, yeah, start to dip your toe back into dating. It's a, it's a healthy thing to do. Don't jump into a relationship, but just prove to yourself, I can do it again. It wasn't that special. Now look, lastly, the commenter talked about how 
her ex had in her specific situation had lied to her and kind of like cheated behind her back which makes things much worse when you've been betrayed that uh like that really does a number on you psychologically you know like when if there's a breakup that's more or less amicable those can be rough but at least you're like it was in good faith but when someone was lying to you and has betrayed your trust it's like I don't even it's difficult because your reality has fallen apart like it does with any relationship that ends but you are now looking back and realizing what I thought was reality wasn't real that was all a lie that was based on something that I was misled on which can devastate you and make you feel like I can't trust anybody ever again and it can make you feel like um, I'm such an idiot and how could I have let that happen and like why didn't I see that and what what else am I not seeing is this gonna happen again that is, that is difficult. The way to kind of fast track healing on that is to really, um, really just focus on yourself and realize that it's not your fault that the other person lied to you, that you had a false reality built up. It's not your fault. You, just, you didn't see it because how could you have? Accept that. Give yourself some compassion, you know, and realize that, um, by working on now you need to build your own reality focus on yourself and it's it, it does highlight some things to improve in the future with drawing boundaries because a lot of times when we have had like our trust betrayed and stuff it's not our fault that's not what I'm saying but it can have to do with you maybe having some kind of boundary issue that allows people to think they can do that Again, not blaming you, but that's an, an example of issues that that kind of breakup can bring up to show you what you need to work on on yourself. In general, after a breakup, it's a great time to really work on yourself. Start to work out more. Wor work more on uh, your personal development. Work on making more money. Whatever it is that you think needs improvement in your life. This is a time to be really selfish and just work on that and be like, I don't have to focus on another person now. And I can really make myself better than I ever was. And in, that's, in some ways, a breakup is a huge gift. You will feel so much stronger afterwards if you really t handle it the right way, where you fully grieve it and then you fully start to work on yourself in the aftermath and to really improve yourself. And, th and that kind of pain can really kick your butt to want to improve more and to really be like, you know, F the BS. <laughs> I only have myself at the end of the day, so I need to be working on myself and not be looking for others to give me validation. I think really what the best thing to realize is that every failed relationship is not necessarily a failure, first of all. Like, just because it ended doesn't mean it failed. It just means it ended. It didn't work. Every relationship that ends is practice for the relationship that will be right for you. You know, there are so many, so many times where I've looked back on relationships and been like, oh, I learned a valuable lesson from that and I sort of needed things to fail in order to learn that. So that's a, that's a good thing to realize. And you may even find yourself one day when you find the one when you find that relationship that's working and you'll realize I needed to go through those rough times in order to be ready for this person now like I've become such a better person and I've grown so much so those that's my musings on breakups how to get over them some more general abstract ideas about it some more practical tips uh, I hope it can help in some way I know it's rough, but just take the time for yourself to grieve, to fully go into it, and to allow yourself to come out on the other side stronger. Really focus on yourself in this time. It's okay. And you, you will come out stronger and eventually find someone else who is just as special, who you can create a great relationship with. I believe it. 
I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. Thanks so much for watching. Check out some other videos over here if you want to. Uh, maybe that could be a distraction for you. Smash like, subscribe <laughs> if you haven't already. Till next time, stay cool and attractive.